What's up guys, Mr. Johnny Gano here from Mark Gano Gaming and we're back with our Illinois Fighting Online Dynasty here on NCAA 14 as so far this season we've done seven games but we have not done a recruiting update or sort of a season update so we do need to do that because yeah, as you can see we're 6-1, and one. we pretty much clinched a bowl game last week there's a chance we could miss a bowl if we go to 6-6 six and six, but uh, I don't think we're going to be 6-6 six and six. I mean we're playing 1-7 in seven minutes out of Dex game, so I'm pretty confident. It says Illinois is worried about being overconfident against conference foe Minnesota. I guess I was just talking about confidence. Maybe I shouldn't be so confident. So we're gonna go over recruiting, you have the season like rankings and stats and stuff. So looking at the recruiting board, a lot of these guys are offensive skill positions. Offensive skill positions are our biggest need, running backs and receiver. Dan Cook is a senior, Derek Hall is a senior at receiver, and at running back, Kendrick Foster is a senior, Will Taylor is a senior, so yeah. So, uh, my number one guy that I really want is Kyle Davis, I think he's like the 11th best player in the country, uh, it looks like we're going to get him, Louisville is the only other team that has a chance of getting him, he also has the exact same face as Eric Fisher, looking at his stats, luckily he's not a quarterback, the past two athletes that were really high that we got Eric Fisher and David Baird are both quarterbacks. Obviously, it's a good thing that Eric Fisher is a quarterback because he's a beast, but David Baird doesn't play. So, looking at his stats, he's exactly what we need, and that is, I think he's a wide receiver. Maybe he could be a running back, but like 55 elusiveness, 53 stiff arm, 59 trucking, but this doesn't really seem run blocking like. And we also do need a cornerback because Darshim the Dream is a senior as well as Adam Butler. Um,. And his defensive back stats aren't too bad. 80 play rack, 74 man, 79 zone, 71 press, 78 catching. But I think he's a wide receiver, personally. I think we need a wide receiver more. We do have some good freshmen with, like, um, Matt ba or not, not Matt Barnes, Matt Richard and Daniel Barnes, Ron Sport. And unfortunately, literally everyone visited against the, uh, for the Ohio State game. I don't know why we had so many recruits visiting for the Ohio State game. But luckily, Kyle Davis didn't. He's like the only one, and he's probably the one I care about the most, so it works out. Looking at some of the other guys, Quayshawn Law, I think it's like in the top 20. He's a number five star, he's a wide receiver. Uh, looking at him, we have almost all of them scouted, 78 overall. Looks like an absolute beast. I'm not giving him all my points because we have a pretty solid lead on him. Same with Darius Shrub the second, a running back, of course. We need a running back. I think it said he's a power back. 91 speed is very, very solid. Not huge on all the C's in the rushing category and the deep breaking tackle. But he's young. He'll definitely improve. I don't think he's like starter talent, but like I might consider starting him if we get him. Doug White is the third best athlete in the country. Um, I just added him to the recruiting board. Uh, something like a, something good for recruiting is go after players who weren't very locked. A lot of the top players are locked, so this is like the only guy. And defensive end is a position of needs. Uh, Nick Rodriguez is a senior, and the pass, pa the pass rush from the ends have not been great. Nick Rodriguez has been nowhere near as good as he was last year, and Sam McKinney's alright. But Doug White, he's pretty much Clifford Scott from last year. Remember Clifford Scott? Uh, he was an 80 overall defensive end, he went to Michigan. I didn't even see his name on the death chart. He could have started for us, but whatever you want, kid. Uh, TJ Miller, a young wide receiver, six foot. Uh, I'd like to get him. He looks like a very solid player. Uh, probably can be a slot guy because like his sketching stats aren't great, but you see, uh, 91 speed. Um, so he's certainly raw. Probably not going to play a lot next year, but we'll see. I already went over Davis. Uh, don't really need to talk about them. Joseph Hoges, I really want him because our offensive line is not the most talented. And we don't have a lot of players. We're high on for recruiting, so I need to get him. Did he visit? Yeah, against uh, Ohio State game. Uh, John Rogers looks pretty good. Uh, hopefully we can get him. Mark Sampson. Honestly, I'd be a little surprised about if we get him, even though we are winning. But... Hopefully we can. We could use an outside linebacker because Trey Watson is a senior and Marcus Miller is a junior. Aaron Burns, we're definitely going to get him. He looks like an absolute baller. 76 overall. He's a Juco. 82% uh, locked, and we are the only team at the projected cutoff. So we're going to be getting him any week at this point. Middle linebacker, 
is a position of need because both of our starters, Deshaun Phillips and Adam Wade, are, are both seniors. But with Aaron Burns and freshman Billy Ashley, we have a bright future middle linebacker and it's not a huge need if we get Burns. We have Billy Ashley. He's about as good as Burns now. Uh, Patrick King, probably not going to get him. Benson, we're going to get. Cotton, hopefully we get. Anyone else down here? Jimmy Butler. Just thought that was kind of funny. He looks like we're going to get him. Uh, we have two commits so far. The first one is James Landry. Uh, if we get that white guy, he's probably... Well, Doug White. He's actually not white, which is kind of funny. Um, because I said he's a he's white guy, but he's not. Okay, that's kind of strange. I, you, I am confusing you, but... Uh, we did get J Mr. James Landry. Uh, he's probably going to be depth next year, but... Uh, Sam McKinney isn't great. We may even start him over Sam McKinney. And the other guy we got was Brent Charles. We need a kicker because the key Manson sucks. And he's a senior anyway. So, all we have is punter Jonathan Hand, who's like a freshman. I don't even really remember committing him. He might, he might be like a walk-off. So, currently, we have the 95th best class. Not great. But uh, we have a lot of guys up at the top. We're going for... We are in the lead for three five-star uh, athletes. Well, only one of them is an athlete. The other two are a receiver and defensive end of a white guy. So, let's look at top 25 polls. Um, Ohio State, of course, in there at number one. They did beat us, remember. Their last loss was last season against us. Georgia Tech, Nebraska, Northwestern is number four. Ever since we moved them out of the Big Ten, they have been dominating. I would have loved an Illinois-Northwestern championship because it seems like they're rivals, I think. That would be so awesome. If they don't play in the Natty, then we're playing Northwestern early next year. Uh, USC is number 5, Florida State 6, TCU number 7, beating, I think at the time, number 3, Texas. Of course, we are at number 8. Uh, I didn't even notice Nebraska. I was like, where's Nebraska? But yeah, we do have to play them soon. Their quarterback is really good, Jonathan Patterson. Honestly, Fisher stats really kind of look better, but like Patterson's in the highest end running. Uh, LSU number 9, Texas 10, Virginia 11, la 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 la. Alabama has dropped to 15. 6-3 and three right now. I think they won the Natty last year. Oregon State is doing very well outside the Pac-12. I almost said Pac-10 for some reason. Oregon at number 23. And UL Lafayette. Because this game is pretty stupid. So, uh, looking at the other teams getting votes. UCLA, Kentucky, Iowa, New Mexico, and Clemson. Okay. So, now we're going to look at, I think... Let's look at a Heisman watch first. Uh, Jalen Hurts, Jacob Thompson, Jonathan Patterson, season by Heisman running, and look at that. Last game, he was 10 for 27. Drew Locke and Deontay Foreman. Alright, is there anything else? Championship contenders. It's not going to put us very high because it never has. Uh, so, 8, C, 59, 36, and 22. Obviously, the next two years, we're going to be really good because Eric Fisher, assuming he stays for a senior year, We'll be on the roster. Um, here's a look at the roster, by the way. Eric Fisher's already our second best player. Buying Kendrick Foster, who is a senior. Fisher is a 91. He was a 79 when we got him. Uh, and now he's a 91 halfway through his sophomore season. So he's definitely going to be... He might hit 99 at the end of his junior season. Uh, Will Taylor, Key Manson deserves to be like a 2 overall. A lot, a, lot, a lot of 80s. A lot of 80s. As you can see, and most of these guys aren't starting. Uh, Brian Booth is starting. Matt Richard sometimes starts. Uh, but other than that, I don't see any of these guys who are starting. So now let's look at stats. We're going to look at the whole league and look at our team. Anything I need to do? I don't think so. Oh, you can practice? I never knew that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, so season stats. Looking at uh, what we've done this year, David Barrett has played really well. When he has gotten a chance to play, Eric Fisher, the completion percentage, I'm not huge on, 58%. But he's only thrown five interceptions. He's never been a big interception thrower. Last year, he threw 10. He's probably going to throw about the same. 19 touchdowns, so he's probably on pace for maybe 35 touchdowns, which I think is also very similar to last year. 26, so probably... About the same amount of yards, more touchdowns, same amount of picks. Um, he's been about as good as he was last year. 
as it was this year for completion percentage has been a little bit annoying, but the receivers haven't really been too reliable. Kyle Bush has obviously made a lot of drops. Kendrick Foster has made some drop passes. Running the ball, Kendrick Foster has played pretty well this year. Uh, with Eric Fisher, we have not run the ball as much as we did. I know 47 rushes seems like a lot, but they count sacks as rushes in this game. He had 10 rushing touchdowns last year. This year, he only has one because we've been more cautious with him with all of the injuries he got last year. He started every game last year, but he got hurt a lot. So we just don't want to risk it, and it's worked because he's gotten hurt much less. Will Taylor only has three carries, really. I thought he'd have more. That's kind of strange. Uh, receiving uh, Jackson Kelly, he's had a slow start, but uh, he's definitely looked like what he was last year. Touchdowns, he might have a little more yards. I think it might be a tad less. Catches may be about the same. So Jackson Kelly, um, he's certainly done better as the season's progressed. Kendrick Foster has played well receiving, even though he's had a few drops. This is it? Yeah, three drops. Uh, Kyle Bush has three drops as well. Uh, Derek Hall's played well. Dan Cook has been kind of uh, disappointing. I expected more from him. Uh, Daniel Barnes and Matt Richard have each gotten to play a little bit, not too much. Kyle Bush, uh, he needs to improve. Uh, Anthony Riley has two touchdowns, and Will Taylor has 41 receiving yards blocking. The offensive line has been better than I thought it would be, considering 87. I don't think he's starting. 80, 80, um. 78, 82, and 81 with uh, Jay Simpson. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, Delshawn Phillips leads in tackles. He's been very good this year. Hopefully, he gets drafted. Marcus Miller in second. Really interesting. Um, Charles Cook has played really well lately. Darshim's had a very good season. Trey Watson has sort of cooled it down from his red, heart, red hot start. Brandon Booth has been playing some really good football. Melvin Washington only has nine tackles. I don't know if that says like that he's done really good in coverage. Uh, Nick Rodriguez has been awful compared to last year. Last year, he was one of the best defensive players in the country, and this year, he has had nowhere near the same amount of production. Trey Watson leads in stacks, followed by Steve Cleveland. Uh, Nick Rodriguez, interceptions, four from Charles Cook, three from Adam Butler, two from Darshim and Dalshawn Phillips, one from Brian Booth, and Melvin Washington. Fumble forces, only three fumble forces, really. And uh, we certainly have a few defensive touchdowns. Two from Adam Butler. He had two pick sixes against Purdue. And one from Brian Booth, I think. That was against Iowa. So both of those were pretty recent. Kicking, if the game decides to ever load. Akeem Anson has been awful. We all know that. He's 25 or 26 on extra points, though, which is solid, but he does suck. And Jonathan Hayne has been alright. So we don't have too much time left. Let's look at NCAA. Uh, Sean Jackson is the best passer rating. Chad Irvin in second. Corey London leads in yards by a mile. But remember, we played Washington State back in like week two of this season. And they do not run the ball. They ran it with their running back probably about six times that game. No more. 21 touchdowns to one interception? That's actually crazy. 31 touchdowns from London and Jalen Hurts. Interceptions most is 15 by George Hayes. He threw three against us. Corey Simmons leads in rushing yards. Sonny Michelle receiving. James Hubbard, same thing. Washington State does not run the ball. Calvin Ridley up there. Jackson Kelly is somewhere. Uh, blocking. Um... 11 sacks lost by a center. Three centers. That's honestly kind of surprising. One of them's a 93. Mike Handy leads the NCAA in tackles sacks. Trey Watson's in second behind Aaron Howell. He's been in second for a while. Howell's been in first. Interceptions currently seven for Jonathan Gore. Number of players have six. So that's going to end the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Next episode is going to be against the Golden Gophers.